very good afternoon. And uh, today we have our speaker, Ms. Prajikta Sabnis. And uh, in different occasions uh, during this ITMC or our Women Research Conclave, or maybe in the occasion when we started the West platform, we had been talking about uh, women in STEM. We have been talking about the Startup India campaign in the country. We have been talking about the need of indigenous software development in the country. We have been talking about ind indigenous equipment development in the country. So today we have a co-founder of Urja.energy, Ms. Prajakta Sabnis. Uh, she will be talking about their own software that is Urja.energy that has been first time developed in the country and uh, they are the one who have indigenously developed this software and this software is now available to all the academic researchers of the country through the national portal that is istem.gov.in. Uh, so we welcome Dr. Prajakta. She has completed her uh, master's from uh, master's of technology from IIT Bombay and she has a rich 15 years of experience in uh, developing the software and uh, data analysis, data modeling. Uh, so we we have a really good experienced uh, co-founder uh, here um, in, in the technical terms. So uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for accepting the invitation from iSTEM. And uh, uh, the session is now over to you. And we look forward to a great session. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Pooja for that wonderful in, uh, introduction. And again, thanks a lot for giving us an uh, opportunity to present in uh, the ISTEM session. Hope you all will find the session uh, useful and post the session. We will also be sharing some uh, detailed instructions as well as some sample files so that you can start using the software, uh, which is available through ISTEM portal as Pooja has mentioned. So as Pooja was mentioning uh, during the introduction itself, uh, our uh, software Urja is uh, developed uh, uh, here uh, indigenously. And uh, as uh, she has also mentioned that all uh, three of us, the founders, uh, we uh, used to work in a software company in a CAE industry and have been uh, working in the same industry for more than 15 years, 15 to 20 years itself in different fields and uh, have been also uh, using the different tools as well along with developing. What we realize that uh, even though, means as you would also agree that even though the software development is uh, by and large is done by the Indians, majority times that the IP is given to someone else. We are merely looked as like we can use the software or we can support the software, but not as the develop the software, even though the developers are indeed Indians. So we wanted to have the uh, software which is developed outside uh, out of India, but definitely we can cater to Indian as well as the global market. And at the same time, the software should be easy to use and it should solve the actual uh, real life problems rather than just uh, uh, having yet another tool. So having these things in mind, we have started Urja uh, uh, last March and we just uh, about just finished one year itself. And uh, when we are talking about the uh, simulations itself, uh, as uh, I guess means many of you are from the simulation background also um, or might have used the simulation tools also. So I will not get into the details of why simulations are required, but rather I would just touch upon that what kind of different approaches are available. like. Few could be the physics-based modeling approaches. Definitely these approaches are useful provided that you have all the available data. And when we are talking about the batteries, for example, with the topic for today's discussion, we know that the battery is like, first of all, the engineer structure itself, engineer material itself. And then in that case, one needs to have details about uh, all the details. Like, uh, for example, when you are considering, so let's say, some cylindrical uh, uh, lithium-ion cell, then one needs to understand that what kind of material cathode is having, what kind of material material anode it's made up of. And when I'm talking about material, it is like the composition also it's required. A slight change in the composition, the performance characteristics of the cell are going to change greatly. Same way like how much uh, that electrode coating thickness is there, what kind of particles that are being used uh, while manufacturing that cell. So cell manufacturing process is also having a great impact on how the cell is, being, uh, is going to perform. Now, when we are going to use the physics-based models, 
one needs to provide all this information accurately so that you can get the uh, accurate uh, results of the predictions. But it is very difficult to find out these parameters because the cell manufacturers will not be giving access to these parameters because it is their proprietary information. Uh, in order to conduct the experiments uh, for these cells, it will take some six to eight months of time. And again, as we know that batch to batch, there will be some manufacturing, uh, what I can say, the uh, uh, some variations would be there and be because of those variations the characteristics characteristics are also going to change so practically it is impossible to perform such kind of experiments for each and every batch of the same cell hence even though the physics based models may give you the solution one needs to highly rely upon how you are going to get the data or we'll need to make the assumptions that okay there will not be any uh, changes severe changes in the uh, process or the uh, details of the cell on the other hand, there are different approaches available like mathematical approaches or the pure machine learning approaches, which could be the fast approaches. Uh, but at the same time, the accuracy might be questionable because when you are solving for the mathematical models, lots of assumptions are made in order to simplify those models. And hence, if they are, even though they are fast, the accuracy may not be achieved as expected. On the other hand, if you are talking about the pure machine learning models, the data requirement is pretty huge because otherwise, if you are not training your model with good amount of data, then your model may get underpredicted or overpredicted. So we wanted to understand how we can develop a software which will resolve the issues of like huge uh, data requirement at the same time, a very difficult uh, to obtain data, how we can get rid of such kind of things yet have a software which can be used by anyone, which can be easily used and still give the accurate solution. And for that at Urja, we have come up with this approach, which is the hybrid approach, wherein we use the physics-based models along with the machine learning models in order to get the fast and accurate uh, uh, solutions. What I mean by that, uh, that combining these two approaches is that uh, we start our model with the physics-based uh, solutions. We define the initial solutions uh, space. Then by using the machine learning models or the data-driven models, we uh, uh, capture the accuracy for the uh, uh, model that you are solving. Now with this particular one, uh, the, when we are talking plainly about the machine learning model, wherein one may need to have some 40 to 50 data, data sets. Whereas when we are using such kind of hybrid approach, maybe some few data sets, even six to eight data sets maximum would be required over here. At the same time, as we are solving physics, uh, using for physics based simulations as the uh, initial guess or the, to define the initial solution space itself, uh, it is not mandatory to provide all the uh, uh, cell level parameters, which are like 40 plus parameters uh, as uh, expected or accurately uh, in order to define the physics based model. And because of that, it is very easy to use. It is very simple to uh, access the data which is required for the tool itself, yet you can get the uh, accurate solution. And for that, uh, when we are so having the interface, means once I show you the demonstration, you will get to see that the interface is pretty intuitive interface, uh, The based upon what kind of analysis that you are selecting for. Accordingly, the uh, inputs will be asked. There isn't any kind of jargon use that uh, one will need to first of all search what exactly that input means and then provide the values. The data which is easily accessible in the data sheet or in the cycler form, the uh, inputs can be provided and based upon that, you can get the output. At the same time, even though we say that it is easy to use, it is simplified, at the back end, we are solving all the types of complex equations. We are just not passing that complexity to the user. We want user to use the easy to uh, easily available interface itself. So at the back end, we solve for the different electrochemistry models. In some of you, might, if you are familiar with the modeling background itself, uh, one can have these uh, P2D models if, or the DFN models, maybe I can say, or the single particle models. Or uh, when we are talking about the degradation, the uh, cell level degradation itself, then in that case, it could be like SCI layer growth, loss of active material, or the different types of mechanisms are involved. All those mechanisms are considered. For the heat transfer analysis, we uh, account for the all the different types of heat transfer modes, including the heat transfer via radiation also. Along with that, we use the different uh, machine learning algorithms as well as the optimization as well as the parameter estimation algorithms. Even though we are solving all these complex equations at the back end, coupled equations at the back end, the front end you will get to see that it is very easy to 
use. And with this, we have come up with uh, an interface which has been used by a uh, few customers also, few users also. And what they have also reported that the, uh, the interface what Urja is providing is much faster. In many cases, they have found like 90% like faster than their existing solutions as well as it is uh, accuracy uh, that they have obtained around like 95 to 98% also. So, in order to do these uh, simulations, we have come up this software suite, which is available through iSTEM portal also. All the entire software suite is available through iSTEM portal, wherein you are having uh, apps in order to define the cell as well as the different packaging materials or uh, in order to create the pack designs. That also we want to simplify. We want to have users to spend, let's say, some months and months time in order to create the geometry and then mesh it. We want to simplify the process so that you can spend more time uh, on analysis itself. So for that, easily uh, easy to use design app is provided. Then we are also having some property estimation apps or the thermal management apps or the uh, degradation app. So current version of the software is caters to it caters to the uh, uh, battery analysis. But going forward, the technology what we are using, it is applicable to the uh, many engineering system. So the same technology we will be also expanding to many other different uh, fields as well. So please stay tuned and definitely we would also like to have those uh, that functionality available to ISTEM as well. So maybe uh, before going forward, I, what I will do, I will directly switch to the interface itself. So any questions so far, please type them in the chat box so that either we can take it right away or we can take it towards the end of the presentation also. So the software what we have developed, it is a, it is a SaaS based product. Again, uh, another advantage of using the uh, web based tool is that you do not have to invest into the uh, hardware as such or at the same time, uh, it can be accessed from anywhere. Oh, once you have the credentials, even for iSTEM also, means this is our app.urja.energy that has been hosted on our server. And this is the iSTEM.urja.energy which is available for you. So if you would like to use the software, I request you to go to this iSTEM.urja.energy, go to the sign up page and you can sign up uh, in order to get the uh, access itself. So here in this case, once the access is uh, provided, once the cred active credentials are available, you can simply uh, uh, log in to your uh, uh, user account itself. And once you log into the user account, you will get to see that uh, uh, there are different means the projects what you are going to create will get listed over here. So these are the few projects that I have created. These projects could be based upon, let's say, different sales if you want to test or if you want to also come up with what could be the optimal pack design for the given sale itself or if you want to compare the different sales performances uh, for the different pack designs. Various types of combinations can be performed and accordingly you can create this project. These projects are nothing but the different types of folders that you can create in the software. So with that, uh, maybe I will just create a new uh, uh, project itself under spaces, I can just mention that I stem for the today's session. So here you can see that once you create the space, you can click on this either this view or you will also get to see this view option over here. Simply click on that so that you will enter inside the app. Now on the left hand side, you will get to see all the different applications as I was showing over here all the different applications are available on the left hand uh, side panel that is nothing but the navigation bar that we call so starting from the property database data processing in order to clean up the experimental data because we deal with the data uh, this uh, data driven models right hence we use the experimental data and it is uh, imperative to clean up that data before we uh, go for the analysis hence we have also included the data processing app then uh, basic cell level performance, cell level analysis if you want to perform, that analysis can, can also be done using the uh, basic physics based approach. Or if you want to go for the pack level analysis, thermal analysis, then in that case you can go for this thermal management or even the cell level degradation models are also available over here. So as uh, mentioned in uh, for today's talk, today we are mainly going to focus on that, the basics of the software and 
द थर्मल मैनेजमेंट हाउ यू कैन मॉडल द थर्मल मैनेजमेंट इन द सब्सिक्वेंट से वी विल बी कवरिंग द थर्मल रन अवे एनालिसिस इज इट द थर्मल रन अवे इनिशिएशन एंड प्रोपोगेशन इन द फैक्ट एज वेल एज द इन द लास्ट सेशन वी विल ऑल्सो बी हैविंग अ कपैसिटी फेड एनालिसिस वेर इन वी विल टच अपॉन दैट हाउ यू कैन यूज द पैरामीटर एस्टिमेशन बेस्ड फिजिक्स बेस्ड मॉडल्स अलॉन्ग विथ मशीन लर्निंग बेस्ड हाइब्रिड मॉडल्स सो दीज डिफरेंट सेशन विल बी कवरिंग different uh, parts of the apps together in any case whether you are going for any type of analysis capacity fed or the thermal analysis or etc one needs to first of all define a cell that is the very basic step that one needs to take so in order to create any models what you need to do is that if there are any sub features available always highlight the sub feature so that you will get to see this create new node so for example you here you can see that i can go to this property database and then click on cell so i will get to see a cell model so here in this cell model what i can do is i can just create a new model give the name uh, as uh, required once the model is created you can click on view in order to get inside the settings of the uh, model as i was mentioning earlier the inputs which are asked in the uh, interface are like very easily available in, uh, inputs the inputs which are given in the cell data sheet that can be directly provided over here so here what you can do is you can select the chemistry again we are not asking for the specific compositions over over here we are just plainly asking that whether it is lfp nmc nc etc chemistries so maybe i am just selecting nmc i can specify as of now the negative electrode is provided as graphite but definitely we are also working on other uh, different types of anode materials as well so if you are interested in uh, working on other different anode materials uh, means for example uh, rather than just having graphite nowadays people are also exploring having silicon graphite blend also so if you are interested in working in that field please let us know definitely we would like to have the discussion further on that uh, point as well but here in this case and when you are using the graphite you can just directly specify the cell nominal capacity again which is available in the data sheet and then different form factors are provided like whether it is a cylindrical prismatic or pouch cell that you can uh, select then provide the dimensions of your own interest whether it is from the predefined sizes or you can also have the custom size given over here the other two columns as you can see over here are the cell thermophysical properties or the or the cell thermal runaway properties these properties to start with you can keep as default or you can also use it from literature where, where in the isotropic properties are available uh, urja also provides a tool in order to calculate these anisotropic properties within the software itself so but before going over there you can just specify these basic properties and then uh, save the model if you are also having access to let's say an uh, additional uh, parameters at the cell level because many of you are uh, working in the research field in this battery analysis and in some cases it may also happen that when you are actually creating your own cells you also might be having access to these different parameters also and then would like to understand that how the cell performance is going to be in those cases you can click on this advanced settings and over there you can provide the cell design properties as well as the cell transport properties when i'm talking about the cell design properties i'm nothing but uh, let's say the electrode coating thickness itself or it could be the particle size so based upon means whether it is a uh, energy cell or power cell these particle sizes are going to be different and then based upon that the performance like uh, is going to be different energy density is going to be different the base cells are going to get heated up their thermal performance is also going to be different and hence you also may want to check that whenever you are changing the particle size how the uh, cell response is changing so that can be uh, done over here or you can also specify that what is the active material fraction so on and so forth so different uh, design properties are specified over here at the same time you can also specify the different type of transport properties by default uh, for nmc and lfp we have given some default properties itself so even though you do not provide exact properties in order to do the further calculation we use those default properties because ultimately as i was mentioning we use the actual cells experimental data in order to do the uh, 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 estimate that let's say the degradation parameters or while doing the thermal analysis we use the hppc data in order to extract the parameters so these parameters are definitely useful in order to fine tune the model 
So, so as I was mentioning, for the thermal analysis, what you can do is specify these properties, the basic properties, specify these default properties or provide the isotropic properties over here to start with and just save the model. So here you will get a message as save the model. Now under property database, which is nothing but the central repository of the, all the properties, you will get to see that there are different other uh, features of features are given. All these uh, features under property database except cell are required for the thermal analysis. So here in this case, uh, for uh, thermal analysis, these different packaging materials are given. For example, it is uh, enclosure, insulation, the filler material, whether it is a conductive filler, air filler that you are having, that is no other filler materials are provided or the PCM, that is the phase change material that you want to have or the thermal pads. All these details one needs to create before you are going uh, to design the patch itself. So for that, what I can do is I can just go to enclosure and I can create a new material. Let's say I'm just uh, providing some sample values. Definitely as per your requirement, you can specify the uh, required values as well. Let's say I'm just providing this. This is the enclosure material. So you can also understand that uh, uh, how the pack uh, performance is going to be when you are using FR4 versus let's say some uh, uh, metal sheets also. Is it going to uh, positively going to affect your thermal performance or it is going to uh, hamper the thermal performance of the pack? So for that, these different materials can be defined even for the for the insulation. So as you might be knowing that uh, whenever we are designing the packs for especially for two wheelers and three wheelers. So you will be having this layered pack structures, right? And in that layered packs, normally uh, two layers are separated by the insulation material itself. And again, people also want to understand that when you are increasing or decreasing the thickness of the insulation layer or when you are changing the different insulation materials, how the performance is changing. And for that, basically, you can define the different types of insulation materials also. So here in this case, we are defining the material types as well as the material parameters, not the design parameters. So here I can just mention that it is the insulation material which is having, let's say, conductivity very for conductivity, I am providing and let's say some density as 1000 I Now, let's say the filler material, this filler could be like uh, conductive filler or the air filler material. So, I can just specify that the filler material point of view, it could be, let's say I am just mentioning it is air only. Okay. So, I can say that uh, the conductivity is 0 0.01, let's say the specific heat I am just providing, sample values I am providing definitely. You can uh, correct the values as you need. Density, I'm just providing over here. If you want to have the PCM materials, then PCM also can be provided. It is like PCM or the non-PCM fillers needs to be provided. It is not like both the things are mandatory. So here you can see that once you create a PCM model, it will give you that what is the solid phase and liquid phase uh, various values. Either you can go ahead with the default values or you can also change as per your uh, material uh, requirements and the next one is the thermal pad let's say i'm just saying pm again thermal pad is also not mandatory because in many packs uh, the thermal pad may not be present also so if you want to have you can create the thermal properties uh, as given over here okay so this way once you uh, first create the cell create all the packaging materials next once these part details are given, you can go for this data processing app. As I was mentioning that, the data processing app helps you to clean up the experimental data that you will be using for the further analysis. Now, from the thermal analysis point of view, one can either use the HPPC data, that is hybrid pulse power characterization data, the test which can be performed in eight to nine hours itself. It is not a very uh, lengthy procedure as well as it is. it can be it is easily available in different labs also. So you can easily perform this uh, test itself. The test itself uh, depicts that you will be charging the cell. It, you will be taking the uh, cell to the 100% SOC, for example, in one of the protocols. And once the cell is taken to the 100% of SOC, you will be resting the cell for two, maybe two to three hours in order to get, uh, get it stabilized. And once it has been rested well, you can start the HPPC test itself. So in the HPPC test, you will be uh, providing the short pulses 
ऑफ वन सी और टू सी और मल्टीपल सी रेट्स ऑल्सो लाइक डिस्चार्ज पल्स चार्ज पल्स यू कैन प्रोवाइड एंड आफ्टर वर्ड्स यू कैन ऑल्सो स्पेसिफाई द टेक आउट द एसओसी लाइक फर्स्ट यू कैन प्रोवाइड दिस पल्सेस एट द हंड्रेड परसेंट एसओसी देन लेट से विथ पॉइंट थ्री सी और सो यू कैन रिमूव टेन परसेंट ऑफ एसओसी अगेन रेस्ट द सेल फॉर हाफ एन आवर टू वन आवर एंड देन अगेन अप्लाई दिस same uh, pulses at the different associates so here in this case what we are want to understand is that what is the uh, rate capability that is hppc tests are typically used to understand that the uh, uh, power available at the for the different uh, c rates as well as at the different associates itself this is what the information that you are going to trying to extract and hence there are different protocols available like one can use single pulse hppc one can use multiple pulse when i am saying multiple pulse that is like multiple c rate hppc to understand that how the c rate dependency is going to be or you can have just charge only or discharge only different types of hppc per test can be performed and all those tests are supported within urja having said that means one can upload this data but at the same time we are also having our own database inbuilt in the software uh, which can also be directly used to start with so now i will first of all just show you that if you have performed the test how you can create the hppc data model itself so let's say this is the hppc model that i am creating again this hppc uh, experiments need to be yeah hello माथे जे तू ओके आई देयर वाज आई एम नॉट वेरी श्योर दैट इफ देयर वाज अ क्वेश्चन बट इफ देयर इज एनीथिंग प्लीज टाइप इन या सो एचपीपीसी मॉडल व्हेनेवर यू आर क्रिएटिंग एनी मॉडल्स मींस आफ्टर दिस प्रॉपर्टी डेटाबेस इज डिफाइंड यू विल ऑलवेज नीड टू सिलेक्ट द सेल from this uh, property database so whatever the cell that we have created cell model we can select it then we can upload the data i can just click on upload and then uh, go to the model and then i can just upload the uh, data itself so for example i will just select this data so this hppc tests are performed at different temperatures so whenever we are going to uh, solve any model what we recommend is that perform the hppc uh, test at at least three different temperatures it could be 10 degrees 25 and 35 degrees for example that will help us to account for the temperature dependency uh, uh, for the heat losses uh, while uh, solving the pack level model and hence this kind of information would be useful but for each temperature data you will need to create a separate hppc model so here you can see that i have uploaded the data the data gets displayed over here i can specify that what is the temperature at which the hppc was performed then i can also specify what is the start time end time as i was mentioning right uh, the cell will be first of all charged completely then rested and after that the hppc uh, test will uh, uh, will begin but in many cases whenever you are taking the data from the cycler the cycler will be providing the entire information starting from that uh, starting pulse charging pulse then rest period and then uh, hppc test and after the hppc test is uh, completed where in the cell might have reached to 10% soc or the 5% soc we cannot leave the cell at 5% or the 10% soc because again the degradation will be faster at that lower soc so normally the cell will be stored again back to the 30% soc or the 50% soc and for that once the hppc experiment is completed you will be again charging the cell and taking it to the required soc levels but from the hppc experiment point of view the data required data point of view we just need the data without initial charging pulse as well as without uh, the pulse which has been applied after the hppc experiment has been uh, performed so for that we need to specify what is the start time and what is the end time if those pulses are included in your data here in this case as you can see that there aren't any additional pulses included so that i do not have to specify any start time or the end time however i need to specify the what is the initial soc when the experiment was started so this was the 100% soc that is nothing but the uh, uh, soc is 1 i am just specifying it as 1 and then uh, uh, click on process raw data 
So once the processing is done, you will get to see that what was the C rate used for charging and discharging and what is the SOC range. This will give you serve as a feedback to understand that whatever the data that you have uploaded, uh, it is getting interpreted accurately by the software or not. If not, then you will need to see that whether the sampling rate at which the data has been saved, whether that is good enough or not, because this pulses will be typically 10 second pulses, 20 second pulses or the 30 second pulses. And in that case, let's say if the sampling rate itself is 10 seconds or so, definitely the pulse width will not get captured accurately and hence the data will not get interpreted accurately also. So that is the information that you will uh, get from this HPPC data information uh, section. Once you, uh, you are okay with the information that has been extracted, whether when it is matching with the actual experimental data that you know, you can move ahead for the further data cleanup. So this HPPC or the DCIR data, data uh, this DCIR data is nothing but uh, the uh, internal resistance uh, uh, extracted uh, uh, experiment itself. So I can just mention that if this is a DCIR data and in the DCIR data, I can again, as I was mentioning, you, you will need to always select the cell model first, load the data, whether it is R0 versus SOC, maybe I'll just, this is the R0 versus SOC data, data that I have applied and as well as the OCV versus SOC. Normally the DCIR experiments will be giving you the discrete data points itself and hence one needs to understand that uh, what kind of uh, data reconstruction needs to be done for the intermediate points as well as the uh, outside points of the data. So the interpolation as, as well as the extrapolation can be performed over here and you can just click on process data so that the process data will be available and once this processing is done accurately you can click on update. So from the thermal analysis point of view, mainly this HPPC is the data DCIR, not both the data sets, either or data uh, is required. Uh, as per our experience, for the better accuracy, we always uh, suggest or recommend people to use the HPPC data because it uh, gives you much more information than plain DCIR data itself. Now, apart from these two data, for the thermal analysis to get the better accuracy, there is one more data set involved that is the cell temperature measurement data. So as I was mentioning earlier that uh, Urja also allows you to estimate the thermal properties of the cell that you are having. So here in this case for that one needs to uh, upload this cell temperature data. The test is pretty simple. The test is pretty simple. You are having a cell which is kept at the room temperature. The experiment itself can be performed at the room temperature itself. You will be supplying a pulse strength or the current pulse strength to the uh, cell itself and then measuring the temperature at uh, three different points on the cell itself. Now, uh, you will need to measure temperature at the three points, current and the corresponding voltage and that data can be uploaded over here in the cell temperature data. So again, once you create a model, uh, select the cell, upload the data itself, just to mention. <clears throat> so this is the data that I can upload uh, in the model. And as you can see that these are the three different data, uh, uh, data points that we have collected on the cell will be applied over here. Then specify the what is the initial temperature, what is the start time, whatever the thermocouple sensitivity, all the experimental details which you will anyway be having in hand will be provided over here and based upon that you can estimate. So estimation model will ensure that the data is getting cleaned and it is uh, stored for the further analysis. So from the th thermal analysis point of view, HPPC or DCIR and optional is the cell temperature data will need to be uploaded. So once the data is uploaded, you are having this uh, basic uh, the data uh, cleaned models are available you can go for the design app for the th from the thermal analysis point of view. So the design app, what it does that it creates the geometry of your pack, also assigns the materials to that pack. Hence, before you go for this design app, one needs to ensure that all these packaging materials are predefined. Okay, so I can go to this design and create a, let's say some PS4P pack I'm creating, let's say. Three cells in series, four cells in parallel. So 
here I can uh, select the cell model by default. Whatever the cell model is available will get selected. If you are having multiple cell models created, you can select them from the drop down list. You can mention that how many cells are in series, how many cells are in parallel. Now, this is just uh, defining the connections itself. But as we know that this 3S, 4P, uh, which is nothing but the 12 cells, it can be arranged in many different ways. It could be like single row of 12 cells or it could be two rows of uh, six uh, cells in each row. Or you might also be having two layers, in which case you might be having, let's say, some uh, 10 cells in one row, uh, sorry, uh, one layer and two cells in the other layer. So it's various combinations are possible. And hence, just providing the series and parallel information is not good enough. So what we do is that we ask you this additional information, the how many layers are present in your pack. Let's say I'm just mentioning as two layers. Uh, how many maximum number of cells available in X direction, let's say, and maximum number of cells available in the Y direction. This is simply creating the canvas on which you can create the pack. So these are like the maximum dimensions that you are creating in all the, all the directions. In order to then specify that actual cells present in the pack, you can go to this placement. And then let's say in uh, layer one, I'm just having, let's say the six cells only. So I can just mention that uh, the six cells which are available over here are this. Or maybe I can just mention that these are the nine cells uh, in the first layer. And in the second layer, I can mention that I'm just having the three cells only because ultimately I want to have the pack which is uh, giving uh, 12 cells, right? So I can just click on save. And here you can see that this is how the pack is getting created. So any type of different shape that you want to have, you can create. This is basically the grid type of structure. You may also go for the staggered structure or more popularly known as the honeycomb uh, type of structure. So for that, one can create, select this staggered option and then define that whether the staggering is done in X direction or the Y direction. And in a similar way, specify the number of stacking layers, maximum number of cells in X and Y direction. And then by using placement, remove the cells on the uh, unwanted cells from that pack itself. All these options can be used. So here, maybe I will just, uh, simplicity, I can just mention that this is 4PS, 4P pack, uh, single layer pack. Other things are required are like the design properties are like what is the gap in X direction and the Y direction here as well as here. You can just mention, let's say I'm just mentioning these are the 5, 5 mm. This is how the placement gets changed. The next is to specifying the packaging details, wherein you can first of all select that what is the enclosure material based upon whatever you have defined in the property database can be selected from the drop down list specify the thickness of that uh, enclosure what is the gap between the cell and the enclosure in x direction as well as y direction and the z direction can be specified if you are having the thermal pads present in your model then you can select that whether the, the, the thermal pad material or you can simply select none and once you select the thermal pad material which is defined again in the property database you can specify in which direction the thermal pads are available and lastly, the PCM material, whether it is a, sorry, filler material, whether it is a PCM or the non-PCM material that you want to have, which could be like air as well as uh, conductive material, anything. You can just select the option and appropriately drop-down list will get populated. Once it is done, you can simply save the model. Now, if the, there are two stacking layers, let's say, then in that case, uh, you will get to see the insulation material also, because as I was mentioning earlier, right, whenever you are having uh, two or more for stacking layers, there will be some insulation layer placed in between two layers. And whenever we are having such kind of multiple layer, this insulation layer information will also get asked, wherein you can select the material as well as you can specify the thickness. So I can just mention maybe here in this case, the dimensions are different. So Okay, I'm just saving this model as it's. So once these dimensions, like the total cells which are given over here, are same as number of cells in series into number of cells in parallel, when this tally is accurate, uh, the model will tell us that the design has been saved successfully. 
So once the design is created from the thermal analysis point of view, either you can directly go for the thermal management, or if you are having the cell temperature data already uh, uploaded in the model, you can go for this thermal property estimation, wherein the anisotropic properties will be asked. So again, I am I can create a model over here. Let's say TP one thermal property estimation one model, and again the model setup is very easy as you must have seen or realized in the first few steps also select the cell the rest of the details will get populated even the form factor and the size then select the data from the data processing app again whatever the information that you have uploaded over there will get populated means we haven't provided the soc as well as the ambient temperature information hence these details are not getting populated over here so add these details if you are having internal resistance versus soc information you can upload that file else you can leave the data as is because it is anyway having current voltage and temperature data which is sufficient in order to estimate the properties once these details are uploaded you can just simply click on estimate so that the estimation algorithm will run so just to show you that once the model is run what how exactly it looks like I can just uh, mention, sorry, thermal property estimation, wherein you can see that this is the model what we have created. And in that uh, model, I can just go for, uh, means once the estimation is done, as you can see over here, this uh, PP, uh, you can see that the result uh, button is getting activated. In other case where the model is still running, this result button is not activated. So this is the normal convention used across the app itself. So once the model is completed, click on results, check what kind of values that you are getting. If you are satisfied with these values, whatever the values that you are having, you can go back to the property database wherein you can create a select a cell. And let's say I'm just say, selecting this cell, wherein I can say that means by default it is user defined only. I can go over here and mention that what kind of, uh, I want to select it from the thermal property estimation app, wherein I can just click uh, from the drop down and select the uh, properties. Once the properties are updated, I can just click on save model. So with this means if the model is used for some other purpose, this prompt will come. Otherwise you can go ahead and save the model. So this way we are estimating the anisotropic properties within the app and then linking back to the cell itself here. So similarly means in uh, this model also, one can estimate the properties and once the estimation is done, you can link it back to the property database, okay? Now, so far we have created the property database, cleaned up the data, created the pack design and the optional step is creating the property model also, or anisotropic properties. Once it is done, you can directly go for the thermal management analysis itself. The thermal management analysis is done in two steps. First is the cell level training and the other one is the next step is the pack level prediction. So what we can do is create a training model. In that training model, I can mention that, okay, select the cell from uh, cell database. It will get uh, the all the information will get auto populated over here based upon whatever the cell that you have selected. Then the HPPC data, as I was mentioning, you can use the built in data uh, itself from the built in database. We are having different types of cells LMO cells, LFP, NMC, NCA again for the different form factors, cells from the different manufacturers also. We have provided cells over here, as you can see. So here you can see that maybe I can just use this BAK cell or this is BAK 4.8 ampere hour or even NMC, uh, Samsung NMC cell also can be uh, used. Or you, if you have uploaded the data, HPPC data for the different temperatures, you can go for this user defined and then select the HPPC model. So as I was mentioning that we recommend using uh, HPPC data for the three to four different or uh, temperatures and well, if you have created such kind of different models HPPC all those models will also be available from the drop down list over here so those models can also be uploaded so either you can use the user defined model or you can use the built in model and click on train once the training is done you will get to see 
the basic characteristics will, will give you an idea that how the cell performance looks like. What is the internal resistance versus SOC? Typically, uh, whenever you are increasing the temperature, this R0 versus SOC should reduce. So you can understand that whether the data is making sense or not, whether it is a physically accurate data or not. In a very similar way, even the OCV versus SOC, for any temperature, ideally the OCV versus SOC should, uh, uh, should be the same only. There should be like very little variation based upon temperature, which you can see over here also. So based upon that, we can understand that, okay, the cell has been characterized accurately. If you want, you can also export these results for the further analysis outside Urja. Else, when this training is done, you can go for the prediction model. Now, create a prediction model. With this prediction model, you can just, uh, when the model is created, click on view. Here you can, first of all, select the training model, what you have created earlier. It could be the different combinations. You might be having three, four training models also, three, four different packs also. And if you want to mix match these different training and the uh, uh, design models, that also can be done. So here I can say that this is the training model. Then uh, select the pack design. Like for example, for one single cell, you might be care, might have created four or five different uh, design models. Or for the same design itself, you want to test that whenever you are using the design 3S4P design with cell 1 to cell 5, how the performance is going to be. So such kind of combinations can be done. Always just the ensure that whatever the parent model that you are using for training as well as for creating that design, it is the same parent model that you are using in both the places. So here you can see that in both the places we are having same uh, NMC uh, cell model itself, NMC 18650 what we have selected and the same is selected from the drop down list also. From the cooling strategy point of view, let's say if you want to have the air cooling, you can specify that if it is a natural convection, which is going to be the case for majority of the two wheelers or three wheelers, then in that case, you can specify, let's say that what is the airflow velocity, mainly it is going to be the natural convection, you can specify really very small uh, uh, velocity value. Or if you are having the heat transfer coefficients, if you know the heat transfer coefficients, you can apply those heat transfer coefficients also. So you can just save this. The thermal runaway propagation we will be covering in the next session. Uh, today I'm just going to cover the thermal management plainly without any thermal runaway. Now here in this case uh, for the drive cycle, like uh, what is the usage profile for which you want to understand the thermal uh, signature of your pack. For that you can upload either current versus time or the power versus time profiles. So I can click on upload and I can just Maybe I can just show you one of the sample drive cycles, which is nothing but the current versus time data. Again, we are also having the having an app that is the drive cycle app, as you can see over here, which can be used in order to generate the current versus time data based upon the velocity versus time data. Because all the traditional drive cycles which we have are available in the velocity versus time, right? Means whether it is MIDC, US06, FTV75, so on and so forth. But whenever we are talking about an EV, we need to have the data in the current versus time format. So this app helps you convert your velocity versus time data into the current versus time uh, format based upon the different BMS settings, vehicle information, pack information, as well as the terrain conditions. So with that, let's say that if you have got this drive cycle data, you have uploaded the data, then you can specify the test condition what is the initial SOC for, uh, for the cells which are used in the pack that can be provided. Let's say point nine, I am specifying what is the pack initial temperature. You can also specify the mesh also. And again, as we were, I was mentioning earlier, you want to make it very easy to use. Hence, we do not want to let, we do not want you to ask that what kind of mesh that you want to have. We have optimized the mesh for the different form factors, different cells itself, be it prismatic cell, pouch cell, or the cylindrical cell, which is used over here. For the different cells, different packs, uh, dimensions, as well as whenever you are having any different uh, design specifications given. Accordingly, the optimal mesh will be created at the back end, and the thermal analysis on 3D model will get solved. But from the front end, you will simply can select that, whether it is a coarse, fine, or the normal mesh that you want to have. Now, from the ambient conditions point of view, it could be the constant temperature, 
or it could be a time varying temperature also wherein you can temperature versus time file can be uploaded if it is a constant you can simply specify that what is the ambient temperature in which the pack has been kept and once these details are given you can simply click on predict button so the prediction will get started so whenever we are uh, uh, starting the prediction the prediction time will always depend upon let's say the uh, the kind of materials used uh, in your model uh, as well as uh, i can say um, the type of uh, uh, the kind of materials used kind of mesh that has been used as well as the kind of dry cycle that you have used in your model so maybe i can just show you one of the salt models itself again it is in the uh, previous uh, uh, project that is i had created earlier so here i am having lots of different uh, sample models that i have created and let's see that uh, i if i have a model with uh, low thermal runaway okay so here this is the setup that i have created and then once the model is run let's see that what kind of results that we can get in the uh, output so here first of all you will get to see the complete 3d uh, heat pack for the pack that you have created and you can also get to see that what kind of cells which are getting heated up maximum so here you can see that the central cells are getting heated maximum now uh, once this 3d map is examined uh, you can see the cell temperature how the temperature of each cell with respect to time is varying that can be observed uh, most importantly you can also understand the temperature range as uh, we know that for the better performing pack or the for the uniform degradation the uh, there should be temperature homogeneity inside the pack that is the uh, difference between the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature should not exceed 3 degrees that is the basic design requirement so you can also understand that whatever the design that you have created whether it is fulfilling that uh, design criteria or not if not you can always go to the design app or you can also uh, uh, change the different designs uh, you can also always change the different materials also material properties or the cell to cell gap or the cell to enclosure gap different design variations can be done in order to ensure that you are reaching this uh, temperature range requirements you can also get to see the what is the kind of drive cycle the current that you have applied and what kind of voltage that you are uh, getting derived from the model itself and all this information is also available and uh, with this export results wherein you can export the csv format uh, file wherein the time versus versus or temperature of each cell as well as the uh, losses for the each cell will also get uh, exported if you want to do the further analysis so this is how typically you can set up a model it could also be set up for the single cell also so for example you can upload the hppc data and if you just want to understand that how the temperature rises in a cell in a single cell itself then in that case create a design with one s one p configuration which is nothing nothing but the single cell itself and then perform this thermal analysis to understand means which could be used for the validation purpose also to start with whatever the results that you are getting from the simulation whether you can reproduce it in the experiments or not and then if there is any difference what kind of uh, uh, conditions that you can apply in the model in order to ensure that uh, both scenarios are matching with even another so that the accurate validations also can be done so uh, as i mentioned in the beginning of the session itself uh, i will also be sharing some sample cases with you uh, sample uh, not cases sample files with you along with the detailed step by step instructions in order to create the thermal management uh, analysis model at the pack level uh, at the same time uh, means even though i am going to share the sample data files as i was mentioning for the thermal analysis it is not mandatory that you are going to use the just the your data we are also having the database for the hppc data sets itself which can be easily used directly from here so that you do not have to go into data processing you know, and upload the hppc data you can simply use one of the cells data over here just ensure that if you are going to use let's say this 18650 nmc cell 3 ampere hour you are creating the same cell model under property database like you are selecting the 18650 form factor Uh, cylindrical form factor and nmc and 3 ampere hour is given as nominal capacity so you can use this data also and try out the software 
so that's all from my side if you are having any questions please uh, feel free to type in the ch chat box Thank you so much for the excellent session, ma'am. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now uh, we request all the participants to uh, please, if you can unmute yourself, introduce yourself to the speaker, and then you can uh, like ask your questions, or you can uh, like use the chat section and you can uh, ask your question there. Then there is a question from one of the user. Uh, yeah. Dr. Chandana Ravi Kumar. I request. Uh, uh, you do sir please uh, unmute yourself and please ask the question directly to the uh, speaker meanwhile i will just answer one one other question that i saw is how to download the software here in this case you do not need to download the software it is available on uh, istem.urja.energy from there you can directly access the software and it is available for all the uh, istem users so please do sign up and start using the software. Uh, also, ma'am, the question is, uh, is there a possibility to use Urja software to perform simulated thermocycling experiment to find aging of electronic devices like piezoelectric ener energy harvester degradation of voltage generation over time? Like some devices, uh, they lose their property over the time. Uh, so is it possible to even uh, simulate the aging properties of electronic devices? Yeah, so the current version that I was talking about, it is basically for the lithium ion batteries itself. It is not uh, uh, using any piezoelectric uh, uh, materials or it is not applicable for the piezoelectric ma uh, materials. Uh, here, but at the same time, let's say that if you are using a piezoelectric energy harvester and if you want to store that energy some uh, in these uh, different cells, then in that case, if you want to understand for those energy storage point of view, how those cells are behaving, how the degradation of those cells are happening, that can definitely be done in Urja. Hope I answered your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one more question I have, like as a final year student, if I start uh, my, uh, what you can say, simulation uh, using Urja.energy software, and I can see that it's pretty easy in comparison to other softwares that we see because it is very much specifically designed to a particular kind of uh, like problems. So, uh, mm -hmm what uh, kind of projects you can suggest to a final year students who want to just get started with urja and uh, they want to uh, start using the software and uh, maybe bring some nice outcome uh, for their final year projects or maybe research work in in future yes sure definitely i can comment on that see uh, one of the challenges means typically whenever you are doing these research problems right that will also be like what kind of uh, challenges industry is facing or what what kind of value that we can add right yes. so in that case uh, let's say that uh, one of the challenges the current challenges that uh, industry is facing that how we can pull down these batteries one is for the from the safety point of view thermal runaway point of view but the cooling down of the batteries is very important even from the degradation point of view that we want to increase the cycle life we want to understand if the given pack can last for instead of lasting just for three years, if we can extend that life to five years or the eight years or so, as uh, Europe is giving like warranty as eight years or so, also in same, some cases. So, and in order to understand this uh, life or the degradation, uh, less degradation, one needs to understand that the temperature of the cells within the pack is not, uh, is first of all uniform, so that uniform degradation is achieved in the pack. And secondly, you are also not uh, increasing the temperature, let's say beyond 40 degrees or so, so that the degradation will also be less because whenever you are going to increase the temperature, definitely the degradation rates are also going to be faster. Again, even from the safety point of view also, whenever we are increasing or whenever the, because of the use of the battery pack, whenever the temperature is going to increase, your performance characteristics, even from the safety point of view, it will get into thermal runaway uh, faster as well. In addition to that, as we uh, know that the uh, temperature, like uh, basically in today's uh, 
uh, you market you can see that uh, all of us we want to understand how we can use the fast charging for the battery packs so what could be the appropriate fast charging algorithms which will not heat up the battery pack very high but at the same time at the same time you can get the fastly charged battery but again it is not uh, 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 affecting your degradation or the cycle life also so these are the actual practical challenges which are present in the market so from the thermal analysis point of view one can understand that what kind of different materials that i can use what kind of pack design because it is not a standard pack people are coming up with various different shapes and sizes of the pack to understand that how i can cool down the battery how i can uh, reduce the minimize the weight of the battery pack at the same time get the required amount of energy out of the battery pack that is one of the things which you can definitely understand uh, perform the simulation from urja and understand that what kind of optimal design that you can get from the pack another challenge what you can also address that means as i was mentioning about the pcm right that is like something upcoming technology that people are trying to work that rather than using some conducting filler because whenever you are using conductive filler it is going to increase the weight of the battery pack but in order to perform the increase the performance of the vehicle you want to lightweight the battery pack itself in order to increase the range so in that case you want to have the same performance with the uh, with light weighting so one can also go for the phase change materials but whenever we are making any technology advances or the changes it will comes with its own challenges also so one needs to understand that whenever you are going to use different types of filler materials different types of phase change materials how it is going to imp impact your thermal signature as well as the thermal performance at the same time whenever we are making these uh, battery packs like which are getting cooled down very very good because of the conducting filler or it could be like some different types of uh, enclosure material there is always a trade off between whether the uh, pack will behave better in the uh, in normal operation versus how the pack is going to perform if any cell is go undergoing going to undergo thermal run away so how you can optimize a design which will fulfill both the conditions so you can there are different types of uh, i can say that research ideas available wherein you can do the different uh, whether you want to optimize the battery pack for the safety safety point of view for particular application or if you want to design a battery pack uh, which can also increase the battery life itself means in next session i will also discuss that how you can do the degradation analysis in urja to understand that how the uh, cycle life is getting affected and how you can also uh, change the various uh, operational conditions like different soc limits how you can change different c rate windows you can change as well as different temperature windows you can change in order to ensure that you are increasing the cycle life of the uh, cell so these are the different things means i can uh, suggest few but if you are having any further ideas definitely uh, we can discuss one on one and uh, i can help you as much as possible thank you so much ma'am it was a detailed uh, description how we can use the new indigenia software for our different different research work now i request our uh, participants to please uh, uh, feel free to ask the question and uh, if the, if there are any confusion related to um, any software or any, any 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 part of the software please uh, feel free to uh, unmute yourself have a word with our expert for today and uh, uh, from here let's start the conversation at least yeah so there are couple of questions also puja are asked uh, one is i want to know that is it possible to publish the outcome data from urja app in a research paper so maybe puja you can comment better on the istem policy if that is okay with you uh, yes uh, all the researchers who are using uh, the software which are indigenously uh, uh, by the maybe uh, our country or maybe that are available at our uh, istem portal and we have procured the license in both of the cases you have to acknowledge uh, the original uh, like for example if you will uh, use urja.energy software you have to acknowledge the original software uh, company or uh, they, we will get us a certain acknowledgement from them so yes you have to acknowledge them as well as the national portal and in this way yes you can publish the data we don't have any restriction uh, from our end 
At that is again, uh, it's up to Urja dot energy. If they have any other um, acknowledgement policy, they can also uh, let us know and we will forward it to the users or they can directly yeah. interact with the user. From our end, uh, there is no restriction. But the acknowledgement yeah. to the original uh, company or original software people that needs to be done. Basically, the yeah. company. Yes, yes. Thanks. Thanks, Pooja, for giving the clarity. Sure. There is uh, one more question that uh, if you have any Urja modeling for uh, lithium ion battery and its experimental characterization that has been authenticated. If I understand correctly, you, if you, you are asked, trying to uh, understand that if Urja results have been validated with the experimental data or not. Just correct me if I misunderstood your question. But if it is about the validation, definitely we do have uh, validation done with uh, experimental data for the different chemistries, different form factors, as well as I can say, uh, for the for various uh, uh, pack designs also. If you're interested, definitely I can share it with the ISTEM team and they can uh, share it with you. Uh, so are there any other questions? Please feel free to unmute yourself. We had still uh, like almost uh, 15 minutes left so we can have a good conversation. Uh, otherwise, uh, I would like to thank the speaker uh, in next one to two minutes. So please uh, feel free to uh, uh, like ask the questions. Okay, uh, so so uh, so now there are no further questions. I would uh, really like to thank our uh, speaker for today. Uh, Ms. Prajakta, that has been a very good session. Uh, and also I can see the uh, the speed uh, when you were simulating uh, the results. It, it was way faster than we actually see on our uh, like uh, different different software platforms that we have already as a researchers, we have used many. So uh, this is really appreciable. And uh, thank you so much to all of the participants. I have given the chat link uh, in the uh, this in the chat section. There is one WhatsApp group that we have recently created. All of us uh, who are here in this session, uh, you can directly join that WhatsApp group. And we have two more sessions with Dr. Prajakta and the team uh, from Uja.energy. The first, uh, the next one is on 11th of May. All of you can join with the same meeting link on 11th of May at 3.30. And uh, uh, second is on 25th of May. Uh, we are slowly because coming up with this uh, concept that uh, we are creating a user base for Energy, and we are also trying to uh, promote uh, one of our policy that we promote the startups of the country in one way or other by providing them with the uh, advertising platform or uh, by providing them with the basic necessary infrastructural support that is required. So under that policy also, uh, we will definitely be in touch with energy always as far as uh, our projects uh, permits. So on 11th May and 25th May, again at the same time using the same link, uh, you can join the session. On 11th May, uh, ma'am will talk about or the team uh, will talk about the thermal runaway, uh, how to mitigate and understand the process of thermal uh, runaway. The second, uh, on the 25th May, we will talk about how to predict the, uh, um, the, uh, the predicting the battery capacity quickly with the Urja software, how you can predict the battery capacity using the Urja.energy software. So uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable time. And uh, the session was really good. And uh, uh, it was like uh, very uh, crisp and uh, uh, to the point. Hopefully all the researchers will come back for the next session and we will uh, like start to use Urja.energy more uh, in our research work. And uh, uh, in this way, uh, uh, like we can create a new community uh, in the country who are uh, like uh, into EV modeling, uh, battery testing, battery packaging, and uh, we, uh, we definitely look forward for a bright future. So uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you to all. You. And ISTEM team, so uh, yeah. ISTEM team wishes everyone a very good day. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Pooja and the ISTEM team. And I uh, request all of you to please try out Urja. And if you are having any questions or even the feedback also, please feel free to uh, let us know. We would be more than happy to receive your feedback and work upon that feedback. Thanks a lot. 
Yes, uh, and in case uh, like you want to reach uh, Dr. Prajakta directly, Ms. Prajakta directly, you can also, uh, ma'am, if you can give your email ID to the users uh, yes. so that they can, uh, or any uh, user uh, email ID where uh, they can contact. Uh, sure. So you can directly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can also yes. directly reach to ma'am because she's an expert and uh, maybe that will be really helpful for all of us. Thank yeah, you. Same. Thank you so much. I have mentioned my uh, email uh, address also. Please uh, feel free to reach out to me in case of any questions. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. Thank you. And the recording of this session will be available on iSTEM uh, India YouTube channel. From there, all the uh, recording can be accessed. Other than that, in case you feel any queries, you can go to iSTEM.India. Support team is there. You can drop a call to any one of us. We will definitely help you. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, ma'am.